The pretrial hearing for a private first-class Bradley Manning ended today, with the prosecution and defense teams making their closing statements before military court at Fort Meade in Maryland. Manning stands accused of passing hundreds of thousands of classified documents to WikiLeaks while serving in Iraq. Over six days of court testimony, Manning has been alternately portrayed as a traitor knowingly aiding the enemies of the U.S., a hero who blew the whistle on the atrocities of war, and an emotionally unstable soldier wrestling with homophobia and gender identity issues. In Washington, FSRN's Alice Olstein reports. Lawyers for the military and for Bradley Manning summed up their case Thursday morning before Lieutenant Colonel Paul Almanza. Almanza must now decide whether or not to recommend to his superiors that Manning face a full court-martial. Jeff Patterson is one of the founders of the Bradley Manning Support Network and was in the courtroom for the closing arguments. The military's prosecution simply wants to focus on the question of, you know, did Bradley Manning access this information, transfer it to his personal computer, and then send that information on to WikiLeaks, uh, which then posted on the Internet. David Coons, Bradley Manning's attorney, uh, laid out uh, that many young people have a belief that they can change the world and make an impact for the better, and that uh, his client was probably in that same frame of mind when he provided, you know, information of wrongdoing, even if it technically uh, broke military regulations. As Patterson explains, Manning's lawyer also focused on two key reasons why Manning should not be punished for the leaks. One, everybody in Bradley Manning's unit violated security computer policies in regarding classified information and the use of computers. And uh, he was definitely dealing with many personal and behavioral issues. By the Army's regulations themselves, he should have not been deployed to Iraq, and if he was, he certainly shouldn't have been in charge of classified information. Earlier this week, the defense team submitted as evidence an email Manning wrote to his supervisor, Master Sergeant Paul Watkins, in which Manning said he was suffering from gender identity disorder, which made it difficult for him to perform his duties. He included a photo of himself dressed as a woman. Lawyers also questioned Manning's Baghdad roommate, who said he stopped speaking to Manning after discovering he was gay. This element of Manning's defense strategy has angered some in the LGBT community, including Captain R.C. Cooper with the Log Cabin Republicans, an advocacy group for gay and lesbian conservatives. The betrayal is double. There's the, the macro betrayal of the behavior, the treasonous act of actually sharing sensitive classified data. So that's a betrayal of, of all. And then you add to the layer, if you happen to be a gay or lesbian service member, uh, it, it just turns it up a notch. It's even more of a salt in the wound or, or a dagger to the stomach in the sense that there are those who fought against open service. There, there were those who fought against repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell who made the claim that gays and lesbians were unfit for service. So to have a case like Manning's out there could be fodder or, or tool for your anti-open service proponents. Yet Cooper, who served himself under Don't Ask, Don't Tell, said the policy did foster a stressful and damaging environment for LGBT service members. President Obama signed the law repealing this policy one year ago today. As for Manning, the future is uncertain. If convicted of all 23 charges against him, he faces multiple life sentences with no possibility of parole. During closing arguments, his lawyers pushed for the court to consolidate some of the charges and drop others, so that he would instead face a maximum of 30 years in prison. As an enlisted soldier, he gets none of the whistleblower protections that cover civilians. Manning's own voice was largely missing from the pretrial hearing. On the first day, this past Friday, he spoke only to affirm that he understood the charges against him. When asked on Wednesday if he would like to make a statement, he declined. Just after the hearing wrapped up Thursday morning, Patterson explained the legal path ahead. The investigating officer will write up an opinion. He'll give it to the commanding general of the U.S. Army Forces in the District of Washington, D.C. And the general will, will and essentially, he can do whatever he wants. Uh, he can take that opinion, uh, use it as his own, make any modifications, toss it out. It's completely up to him. Uh, the most likely thing is that most of these charges will go to court martial back here at Fort Meade, Maryland, sometime in the spring or summer of 2012. Zach Pesavento with the Bradley Manning Support Network says the organization will continue the protests and civil disobedience actions that have regularly taken place since Manning's arrest in 2010. 
He hopes public pressure can influence the outcome of the case. The harder they want to come down on Manning, the more significant our response will be. The government should understand that there's a process of escalation here, and I think as we move into the uh, election season, um, that's something that Barack Obama is going to have to consider as he makes his campaign stops going forward. Investigating Officer Almanza is scheduled to make his recommendation on January 16th, but could request more time to examine evidence and testimony. Manning, who turned 24 years old last week, will spend the holidays in prison. Alice Olstein, FSRN, Washington.